Oh, dear God, we really thank you for the great prayers that have gone out. Thank you for your mother's prayer. Thank you for Shelly's prayer. Thank you for Cheryl. Touch all of their healths, Heavenly Father, collectively. In the name of Jesus, Lord, give us strength right now to continue on and to preach your word in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank God. It's on? Okay. Well, we're back again for another Wednesday. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We are in the book of Romans. The book of Romans, the first chapter. Hallelujah. Uh, pros Romanos to the Romans. And this is the epistle of Paul to the people of Rome. And we've been, we've just been in several weeks now. Last week we left you in verse 20. Today we're going to come to you in verse 20 and 21. That's all, just two verses. Just two verses. 21 and 22 of the first chapter of the book of Romans. And we're going to glean a title or a subject from verse 21. Their foolish hearts were darkened. Their foolish hearts were darkened. And if we read this in certain other texts or certain other scriptures or certain other versions of the Bible, it would say something like, and their hearts became foolish and dark. Or their foolish hearts were overtaken in darkness. Or I even had one version of the Bible where it took it and twisted it around where it said there they were there were there were hearts were darkened and foolish. Brothers and sisters, we have a very interesting parallel this afternoon in the Bible here because unlike uh, the first part, the first 20 verses, 21 takes a very different turn. So why don't we start, we're going to recap verse 20. Verse 20 says at the end of it, even his eternal power and Godhead, Godhead, so they are without excuse. When we see that, when it talks about his eternal power, when it talks about who the Godhead is, brothers and sisters, if you're listening to me, and Jesus is the Lord and Savior of your life, it is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In the secular world, everybody looks for their own Godhead. They have their own philosophy. I was looking at something on YouTube the other night, a man was saying he did not believe in God. So that meant that he was either an atheist, a new age person, or an agnostic. But here it is, brothers and sisters, whatever it is, whatever he fixes his Godhead to be, it is not the God of the universe. It is not the God, the eternal one. It is not the one who created the heavens and the earth. It is not he that is Yahweh, Yahweh, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. Know. It wasn't that Godhead. And we have a lot of people today who are making their own Godheads. They don't want to follow uh, God. They don't want to go to church. They don't want to pray. They don't believe in Jesus. They care less about the Holy Ghost. But my brothers and sisters, those of us who know who Jesus is and are saved, we have our Godhead. Hallelujah. And his eternal power. A lot of people, they don't want to believe in that. They want to believe in the Big Bang Theory. They want to believe in what some of the more famous atheists and agnostics have had to say. They want to believe in what the many philosophers over the centuries have said. But I stand here boldly to tell you and proclaim to you today, I believe in his eternal power. I believe that when he called the earth into existence, the Lord is my shepherd, ex nihilo. I sh uh, when he said that, the, when he said we create the heaven and the earth, I believe that. I believe in what was written in the Bible. I believe in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. How I knew it today. I believe in the K2 being the writings, the, 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 the songs, the songs of Solomon. I believe in the major prophets, Isaiah. I believe in Ezekiel. I believe in Jeremiah. I believe in the minor prophets, uh, Obiah, 
uh, Obadiah, I believe in what they said. I believe in Malachi. I believe all the way into the New Testament. I believe in the New Testament. I believe the Bible is the word of the true and the living God. And if you want power to, to go in this crazy times in which we live in, get in the Bible. Read the Bible. Read Proverbs. Read Psalms. Read Jeremiah, read Ezekiel, read Deuteronomy, read Malachi, then don't forget the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read the Bible all the way to the revelation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Read the, the 66 Bible, read the Word of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As we get ready to come away from that 20th verse again, His eternal power, His Godhead, so that they are without excuse. When we say without excuse, unapologetics, which means apology. This is where we get the term apologetics come from. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you're an apologist. You don't have to have an official title. You don't have to go to school and have uh, read for four years to say, well, I'm an apologist. You're already an apologist. You're standing to tell the world that you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. You're standing to say that he died on that cross. You're standing to say that the cup that was uh, shed for his blood, you're saying that you believe in the you believe in the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You believe in the entire Bible. You believe without holiness, follow all men with holiness, without which no man shall see God. A lot of people say, well, I can't do all that. Just stand, just, just whenever somebody asks you, just be prepared to tell what's in your heart. And the heart is that you love Jesus, that you are a follower of Jesus. Hallelujah today. Hallelujah. Now we go to our text for today. His eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. Verse 21. Because they knew, knew God, they did not glorify him. And when we say they knew God, these are sad words uh, because a lot of people are rejecting a relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's gotten bad. I do lots of funerals, lots of memorial services, lots of graveside services. And just from the time I was a young preacher 33 years ago to today, it's changed. And just in that time, people would come to funerals and, and hear the gospel preached. They would hear the plan of salvation preached. And they, it may turn them to want to turn them to Shabbat, turn them towards the cross of Calvary. But today, after you could preach yourself into a conniption fit, you could preach yourself into a heart attack, and people will not turn. So you, what, what it is, is it's sad when people, when we hear these words, hallelujah tonight, they knew God. These were sad words because people are rejecting a relationship with Jesus Christ. Genoskio, they don't have a personal experience. They're not seeking a personal experience. They don't want a personal experience. How is it that you live to be 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, 90 years old, and you still turn your back on the Lord? You sit around like you following the things of this world like they're never going to end, like they're never going to stop. But my brothers and sisters, in the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter, Hallelujah. Matthew, the seventh chapter, verse 13. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Now listen to verse 21 in that same seventh chapter of Matthew. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Now here's the sad, sad, sad aspect of that. You have so many preachers now running around trying to deconstruct the Bible. Like I've told you about that before. That's a psychological term that comes out of modern psychology. Well, the Bible really doesn't mean that. Uh, what it really means, baloney. What the Bible says 
It says, what, 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 it, what, it, what, it, what it tells you, it tells you. It's not a time for the, to circumvent and say, well, we think it really means this. No, if the Bible says something, that's what it means. Look at it, listen at this again. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, Antonine, Antonine, everybody that says to me, Elohim, Elohim, everybody that says, Tudos, folks, cosmos, the light of the world, everybody that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does my will of my Father in heaven. You have got to follow him. You have to be a believer in him. You have to, it has to be about him, not about what you think, not about what somebody else thinks, not what some philosophers think, but what the Bible says. Hey, I spent my time in college. I wrote a paper one time on uh, uh, Gurdjieff, which was uh, dealing with Petey Ospinsky, and, and that was, it was a wonderful, and all it was was the words of men. Nothing stands, nothing equals the word of the true and the living. That nothing in me, nothing equals who God Almighty is. That He sent His Son. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but will have everlasting life. <sighs> that's a mouthful, and that's a lesson all in unto itself. Because that although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. They did not honor him, doxio. They did not honor him. They did not praise him. They did not lift him up. Churches, if you want people to get back in church, the Bible says, if I be Jesus, says, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men and lift them up. Lift my Savior. There's like an old song, lift my Savior. We're not lifting Jesus up. We're lifting philosophy up. We're lifting people's own mindsets up. Lift up Jesus. Hallelujah. They're not praising him. They're not honoring him. They're not glorifying him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah today. Nor were thankful. We're not thankful enough to the Lord anymore. There was an old hymn I was looking at the old day. Go give thanks to him who made. Oh, give thanks to him who made morning lights. Oh, give thanks to him who made the evening shade. Oh, give thanks to him who made the glory of giving for all good. Give, oh, give thanks to him for the night sleep. Oh, give thanks for him for our daily food. Oh, give thanks for him who are quicken our weary powers. Oh, give thanks to him who guards us of our unconscious hours. That's a mind boggler all into itself. The first thing you ought to do when you get up in the morning before you wipe that slobber out of your mouth, before you get somewhere and get some mouthwash in that breath, before you get somewhere and throw a piece of food in your mouth, before you get somewhere and look in the mirror and admire how cute you think you are, you ought to give thanks that God kept you during your unconscious hours. How many of you know anything can happen to you during your unconscious hours? I keep a I keep a, a, a look in the neighborhood, but there's sometimes when this old feeble body breaks down. I'm watching Perry Mason late at night, and, and or I'm reading my Bible, or I'm praying, and I've gone to sleep. I don't know what could happen to me during those unconscious hours, but thank God I've got a God who kept me during the unconscious hours. I could not see where all three of my children were. That were one is way down in LA, one right now is in Atlanta. But during these unconscious hours, that same God is keeping an eye over who they are because he has an eye that has never slept during creation. Don't we understand the power and the magnificence of who God is? I remember I used to read Thor comic books when I was a boy. And every so often, Thor had a father called Odin, who was supposed to be a bigger god than him. Well, every so often, Odin would have to lay down in bed and put a cover over him. He had a long white beard, and he would go to sleep and start snoring. What kind of god is that? I've got a god 
that has never slept during creation. I've got a God that knew and kept my father, knew and kept my grandfathers, knew and kept my grandmother, knew and kept my mother, and even when I'm gone, will know and keep my children, and know and keep my grandchildren, and know and keep my great-grandchildren, because we serve an all-powerful God. I'm so happy I threw my glasses. Amen, 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 hallelujah. They did not glorify him as God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But their thoughts, these thoughts, these futile thoughts that man conjures up, these futile mindsets that we have, we think we're so much in those mindsets. Here it is. But we don't even give God for giving us the peace of mind and the power of mind and the mind to even think thoughts. We think we've done it all ourselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Still back in that verse 20, verse verse, but became futile in their thoughts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Montagio. Futile. Futile. Thoughts are futile. They're given to work unworthlessness or unworthless thoughts. Be careful of who controls your mind. Be careful of who controls your thoughts. If you let the world control your thoughts, you're going to be thinking some stinking, awful thoughts. Thoughts of evil when you should be thinking good. Meanness to other people when you ought to be thinking good thoughts about other people. Meaning, meaning uh, having the type of thoughts where if you're not careful, you'll even teach your children those bad thoughts. Instead of teaching them to be kind, to be general, to be generous to people, to be careful with people, they'll have, their thoughts will become futile. Be careful of developing futile thoughts. Be careful of thought, thinking thoughts that are the wrong thoughts. You sometimes my, my mind go in another direction and I go somewhere and I say in the name of Jesus, touch the situation, touch my mind so I won't have evil, futile thoughts. I have good thoughts. I have caring thoughts in the name of Jesus. Still in that same verse, nor were thankful, but became futile in our thoughts. Men today, instead of being worshipers, we're philosophers. We have whole churches now. And don't get angry at me on YouTube. If you're in there, brother preachers, get back into the Bible. It's we didn't, God didn't put us here to be Freud. God did not put us here to be Maslow. God did not put us here to be young. God did not put us here to be Socrates or Aristotle or Plato. He put us here to be followers of you, to be followers of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to tell people that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal. That's what he put us on earth for. He didn't put me on here to think I was so bright and I'm so this and I'm so that. I'm just, a, the old folks used to say we're just pilgrim travelers, traveling from time to don't we understand that? These this little itty bitty bit of time that we have here on this earth. We're not we're, we're not being fellow worshippers anymore, but we're being philosophers. Oh, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. We are instead of inferring our knowledge, we're surmising our knowledge. To infer means that you gather knowledge on something where there's concrete evidence to support it. But when we get to the other one where it says we surmise, that is to form our own mindsets without any strong evidence. So therefore, you've got people that are, that are busy running around trying to, trying to support their own philosophy. Their own, what they think it ought to no, baby, it's about what God's word says. Follow the word of God. Hallelujah today. It's not time to follow Confucius. It's not time to follow the Tao Te Ching. It's not time to follow the Quran. It's time to follow the Bible. Follow the Bible because here it is. 
When you do that and you allow the Holy Ghost to get involved in the situation, right here in Romans, and we've been repeating it over and over, I'm going to repeat it again in that fourth verse, the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. See, we want to be in charge of who we are. We want to show the world how grand we are. We want to show the world how brilliant we are. No, baby, it is the power of the Holy Ghost. That is how I'm able to stand. And until I am no more, I want to stand under the unction of the Holy Ghost. I want to stand under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost tell you what to say. Let the Holy Ghost tell you what to do. And you'll be able to take the authority over any and every situation. And when the Holy Ghost gets control, got churches today trying to run their churches without the power. I'm going to get happy now. Without the power of the Holy Ghost. You've got to have the Holy Ghost. you got to have the Holy Ghost, brothers and sisters. I didn't have the Holy Ghost, but became futile in their thoughts. Hallelujah. 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 They became foolish. They're foolish. Astuslos. Not now when we say foolishness, let me let me break this down. We're not talking about something that is unintelligent. We're not talking about something that has a lack of understanding. We're not talking about anybody that's an ignoramus. But a person who refuses to learn a lesson. Woo! Jesus. Some of you need to write that down. You can make a whole sermon out of that. They refuse to learn. Do you know people like that? You can tell them, go this way. Did they, will they learn a lesson from that? No, because they're going that way. You got people right now, instead of getting in the Bible, getting in the function of the Holy Ghost, doing what they need to do, they're busy going in a whole nother direction. That's, an, that's a sign of a, fool, <laughs> a foolish heart. They refuse to learn a lesson. They refuse to learn from experience. Now, as a pastor, I've been pastor 33 years. Um, I've been preaching 33 years. I've been pastoring 17 years. Have I made mistakes? Yes, I've made mistakes. Do I try to learn from them? Yes. I seek out counsel. I say, Pastor, what about this? What about that? And then after I've sought out counsel, and sometimes I've written it down, then I'll pray that the power of the Holy Ghost takes control of the whole matter. So you see, you have to learn from your lessons and from your experience. Um, people, they refuse to learn from wisdom. They refuse, here it is, when, when my father was, 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 was pastor, there were times where I would think a situation should have went that way. And he would say, boy, no, it's got to go that way. And then what he would do right there in that our back office, we would take hands and he would pray. And the unction and anointing of the Holy Ghost would take over Tillman Wayne Sr. And when we got through praying, the wisdom that he gave me and the power of the Holy Ghost led my mind to go in the other direction I needed to go to. These are when people have, oh Lord, I'm ready, I'm ready to go. Foolish hearts. And the last thing is a person can get so deep in this, their mindsets can get so messed up that they'll take evil for good and good for evil. That's why you gotta watch some of these people around here that's telling you it's okay for you to play with a Ouija board. You gotta watch some of these people that'll tell you it's already to take a tarot card. It's okay for you to go and get your astronomy, astronomy uh, uh, chart done. I told a story about that when I was preaching out at, uh, at, at the church I visited at on Sunday. I talked about that, how a girl I knew, this is a true story, drew my drew my uh, uh, astronomy chart one night and I refused it. Everybody that was there, I was the only that refused and they laughed at me. Laughed me out the apartment. Just a few weeks later, she hung herself because her foolish heart was darkened by this world. And we're not doing enough to get people to accept 
Jesus to get Jesus deep inside of who they are. We're telling people, well, you know, you got to sow your wild oats. Oh, you know, you got to do this. Oh, you know, you got to that. No, people's foolish hearts are leading them to hell. And you've got to be able to stand and say, that's wrong. If you want to see Jesus again one day, you got to go that way. You got to go to Calvary. If you want to see me again, you got to go to Calvary. You got to accept Jesus and follow Jesus. Oh my God, we're, we're just about through here with all of this. Hallelujah. Their hearts were darkened. How, uh, cardia, heart, with all seriousness, with all emotions, with all feelings, the whole cardia can become corrupt. The, the heart that is. Schizo means dark. Be careful when your heart starts getting dark. You'll know because instead of praying for somebody, you'll laugh at them. Instead of praying for a situation, you'll turn on the Oprah network and see who's on there and what they've got to say about it. Instead of praying and let the power of the Holy Ghost come inside of who and what you are, what you'll do is you'll start following the world in all of its darkness. And here it is. The world is a very dark place. The world is a very foreboding place. The world is a very wicked place. The world is a very evil place. And if you want to be able to stand in this little bit of time that you got on earth, you've got to keep your hand, as the old folks used to say, in God's unchanging hands. And the last part of that verse, they their hearts were darkened, meaning that they became fools. Mariano, now that was an easy one for you. What do you think Mariano means? It means it's derived from the word moron, meaning that you allow your heart to be darkened if you believe to follow the, the darkness of this world, that you're somewhat of a moron. Now I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be rude to anybody. But what I'm trying to get you to see the seriousness of what this is really all about. I'm going to do a over in verse 2. Professing to be wise. The Bible says they became fools. Why did they become fools? Because they allowed their hearts to become dark. My brothers and my sisters we live in dark times, what you've got to do if you want to make it, if you want to be able to pull as many people as you can out of that darkness, and the Bible says, into the marvelous light, get them to follow Jesus, and then you follow Jesus, you run to Jesus, you get to Jesus, you stand with Jesus, if somebody's telling you it doesn't take all of that, what you do is pray for that the Holy Spirit will open the eyes and ears of their soul, that they may also see the power of the Holy Ghost in their life and follow Jesus with everything that they have. Because we live in dark times. We live in wicked times. We live in times where people will kill you for no reason at all. People will send you down the river for no reason at all. People will poison you or kill you for no reason at all. But my brothers and my sisters in the church today, let's get more powerful. Let's follow the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, body, and strength. And the last one is to love thy neighbor as thyself and tell the world that Jesus is real, that Jesus is real, that Jesus is real. He died on that cross, but here it is. He got up on the third day morning with all power in his Thank God for that today. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. Thank God for that.